Hello everyone, welcome to the Guido Goes Off. As always, and thank you folks for watching. Welcome to anyone tuning in for the first time. If you have yet to join the faithful, please hit that subscribe button. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to start the biggest criticism of the biggest party of the summer. That is the Guido Goes Off's SummerSlam 2018 review. All right, we're going to start off with the first match of the night, starting off the kickoff show. Uh, Rusev and Lana taking on Andrade Cien Almas and Zelina Vega. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I missed like a good portion of this match. Um, I had to go stock up on snacks and that. But uh, I came in. You know, I saw the finish. Um, talked to boss lady. She says pretty much slap fighting. Uh, there was a. The finish was Lana going after uh, uh, Almas trying to slap him. Um, Zelina got, uh, got her in a roll-up, uh, with, with all, both her feet on the ropes, got the one, two, three, so your winner is the team of Andrade Cien Almas and Zelina Vega. Moving on to the Cruiserweight Championship match, Cedric Alexander defending the championship against Drew Gulak. Uh, this is actually a really good match, um, you know, we should expect nothing less, of course, um, a lot more, you know, a lot more guard game with Gulak, of course, trying, you know, working on the neck area so he could set up for that Dragon Sleeper variation, the Gulak. And, uh, you know, Cedric taking a bit more to the skies, uh, taking a bit more high risk. Um, and then it ended uh, pretty much with a, a, a flurry of move attempts and the thing, ending up with Cedric countering a roll up with a roll up of his own. One, two, three, your winner. And still, WWE Cruiserweight Champion Cedric Alexander. We move on then to the Raw Tag Team Championship match. This match had the B team defending against the Revival. Um, I mean, this match was kind of, kind of pretty much how you expect it. Um, the Revival um, hit. Uh, Curtis X with the Shadow Machine right off the bat, and so that was pretty much Bo Dallas taking on uh, Dash and Dawson for a good majority of the match. It was then that uh, Curtis Axel uh, got tagged, uh, was able to recover, got tagged back in. Um, Dawson ended up getting the roll up, and then uh, Bo tried to uh, attack Dash. Dash punched Bo. He tripped over the two. Moving so that Dawson's uh, shoulders were down. One, two, three, your winners. And still, by luck, Raw Tag Team Champions, The Revival. All right. Whew. That was quick. All right. And we are moving into the main body of the card. And what a way to start off. With the Intercontinental Championship match between Dolph Ziggler defending against Seth Rollins. Of course, Drew McIntyre in the corner of Dolph Ziggler. And Seth Rollins had Dean Ambrose in his. Of course, you know it's kind of cool seeing uh, Seth dressed like Thanos. We were hoping for the Infinity Gauntlet and snap the fingers. I mean, maybe that's me, but you know. But again, whoa. Uh, we got a great match out of those two. We expect nothing less. Um, very little in the way of chicanery, except until the last bit, where um, let's see, where McIntyre uh, threw Ambrose into the steps, and then he tried he tried to get involved, um, and then Ambrose pulled him down the floor, hit the dirty deeds. Seth admiring his friends working, you think for just a second that that he's gonna be distracted, and Dolph's gonna hit the super kick for the win. Seth hit his own super kick, hit the stomp, your winner, one, two, three, and a new Intercontinental Champion, Seth Rollins. All right, moving on to the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match. The New Day taking on the Bludgeon Brothers. Um, it was uh, Woods and Big E um, doing this match with Kofi Kingston at ringside. And, um, I mean, it was, it was a good match. Um, not extraordinarily, you know, no, nothing extraordinary. Um, I mean, it did seem at one point that the two, that, that, that Woods and Biggie were finally gaining some ground. They, uh, 
picked him up, or Biggie was about to set up for the midnight hour, and then um, Rowan hit uh, Woods with the um, handle of the bludgeon, of his bludgeon, causing the ref to throw the match out. Your winners by disqualification, the New Day, still SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions, the Bludgeon Brothers. Um, not a horrible way to end this, as you know, it it shows that there is maybe a chink in the armor in the Bludgeon Brothers, and we could see another team possibly exploiting this later on down the road. Okay, the next match was uh, Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens, and basically Braun Strowman was defending his Money in the Bank briefcase. It was said that if Kevin Owens won the match by any form, either pitfall submission, disqualification, or countout, he would win. He would become the new Mr. Money in the Bank. Yeah, you didn't have to worry about that happening. Uh, I think uh, Kevin got like maybe one bit of offense in, and then it was just Brock's Braun steamrolling him. Uh, hitting the running power slam for the finish. Your winner, still Mr. Money in the Bank, Braun Strowman. Moving on to, quite easily, the match of the night. Um, at least a good candidate for it. The triple threat match. Uh, Carmella defending the SmackDown, SmackDown Women's Championship against both Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch. Um... Uh, Definitely good work by Charlotte and uh, Becky. Charlotte introducing, uh, not doing the moonsault, but doing more Sky Twister press. Um, Becky, as always, uh, top notch um, athleticism. Carmella even throwing a few wrinkles into her offense, which, you know, I know I've dogged her quite a bit, and I'm going to continue because I really don't care for her. But in the end, um, it looked like Becky had it dead to rights. Finally was going to, after for two years of being so close, finally getting, finally getting the SmackDown Live Women's Championship again. She had the disarm her on Carmella. And then Charlotte came out of nowhere with the uh, natural selection. One, two, three, year winner and new SmackDown Live Women's Champion. Charlotte Flair, which makes her seventh main roster championship, her eighth overall if you count NXT, and then Becky beat the shit out of her, and that crowd went nuts, because let's face facts, Charlotte deserved it. You stole that title, you naughty, naughty lady. You just come out of nowhere, get things handed to you. Well, you know what? You also got something handed to you by Becky, and that was your ass. And I'm looking forward to what's coming next. The WWE Championship. Uh, basically, the pretty much the middle of the card here. Uh, AJ Styles defending against Samoa Joe. Um, for those of you who have seen uh, their matches in TNA, um... This is pretty much uh, par for the course. I mean, these two guys, you know, when they get together, always perform great matches. This match was no different. Very solid, very um, exciting match throughout. Um, but toward towards the end of it, um, Joe threw Styles of the steps. That said, that said to um, AJ's wife, who happened to be in the audience, you know. You know, it's like, Daddy's not coming home, but don't worry, I'll be your daddy now. And then that's when AJ freaking lost it and started waylaying Joe with a chair, causing the disqualification. Your winner, Samoa Joe, however, still WWE Champion AJ Styles. Um, so <clears throat> we could see this feud going on for a while, which will be awesome because these two, you know, put on great matches, great promos. There, there's really... Nothing horrible about this at all um, to keep this one going. The next match, Daniel Bryan versus The Miz. Of course, The Miz, um, uh, of course the Miz uh, had uh, Maurice and, we assumed, uh, Monroe Sky in the stroller next to her. Um, it is amazing uh, seeing like what this has become. I mean, everybody knew that uh, Daniel Bryan... Always top-notch athlete. You gives a hundred percent, no matter 
uh, what spot on the card, who he's wrestling against. And The Miz um, has gotten to that point as well. And it's just great to see these two. I mean, these two are easily at the top of their game now. And, um, of course, uh, you know, Miz doing the chicanery and uh, Brian, Brian doing the yes kicks and the Miz doing the yes kicks and then um, trying to get that figure four in. Of course, um, there was that spot where uh, Daniel was uh, was trying to kick uh, Miz on the apron and then ended up kicking the ring post. You heard that thing. You know. Then uh, Miz went for the figure four there. Um, I mean, great action. Um, everybody getting out of everything. It was then that Miz um, collapsed by collapsed on the barricade by Maurice, and Maurice slips something into his hand. Daniel Bryan's trying to go after him. Miz hits him with it. Uh, then moves then moves to give it back to Maurice. Uh, the cover, the count, one, two, three. Your winner uh, by loaded fist, the Miz. Um, of course, they did cut to a backstage um, a backstage uh, vignette after. The match, uh, which definitely seems that uh, that this feud is going to continue, uh, with the possibility of even uh, Bree and Maurice getting involved. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk about Dan Bryan's contract. Um, I will get to that. I am actually planning that for an episode, a later episode. Probably shoot that tomorrow. So please stay tuned to the channel. Subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. That way they'll let you know. Hey, hey, Guido's got a new show. You might want to watch this. All right, well, let's move on to the with the rest of the card. Uh, Barry Corbin facing uh, Finn Balor. Of course, uh, Baron, uh, very cocky, very sure of himself. That all changed when the demon showed up. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure he crapped himself. Um, and according to my Twitter feed, there's probably flooding. Anyway, um, Corbin had no offense. Um, this was pretty much actually a squash um, in favor of Balor. Uh, two coup de gras. One, two, three, your winner, the Demon Finn Balor. Uh, and now Baron has to go cry to mommy. Up next, uh, U.S. Championship match. Shinsuke Nakamura defending against Jeff Hardy. Hardy. Hardy, not Harvey. Hardy. Uh, I mean, it wasn't, this wasn't bad. I mean, it was, you know, it was a good match, but after a lot of the stuff, you're kind of like, you know, I think that, I mean, the crowd was really excited throughout uh, the match and the, or throughout the event, but there was a, um, a couple matches where they were silent, but it was just, I think it was Revenants because they wanted to see this. They wanted to see, you know, a great match. Which in a lot of these cases they got. Um, sorry, more yammer and fuel. Uh, trying to keep this one short. Um, Hardy taking a lot of back damage, as we know, that's been been saying. There's possibility he's got a back injury. Um, you know, she, um. It's been, you know, basically good back and forth. Korshinsky tried to hit the low blow. Um, it is not there. Then, uh, what was it? Um, and then there was a point, uh, Shinsuke was lying on the apron. Um, Jeff tried to hit the swanton. Missed and got nothing but ring apron with his back. Um, Shinsuke got him back into the ring. Hit the Kinshasa, your winner. And still... United States Champion, Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, Randy Orton's music hit, but I was like, yeah, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. I know he did. I think he did an RKO or something. Good. Okay. Next match. Raw Women's Championship. Alexa Bliss versus Ronda Rousey. You all knew what was going to happen. I'm just, I'm not even going to bother. Uh, your winner and new Raw Women's Champion, Ronda Rousey. Really, big surprise. Of course, the Bellas come in trying to sell her, uh, 
you know, Natty comes in to celebrate with Natty coming out wearing her uh, father's jacket from uh, the 1990s SummerSlam. Um, of course, we miss you, Anvil. Um, you know, then the Bellas came out. The crowd booed the crap out of them because, of course, they were trying to get the rub on Ronda. You know, um, but yeah, no, yeah, this was no shocker. You knew this was how it was going to be. There was there was not a way, um, unless you had the entire women's roster come out, that Alexa was going was going to beat Ronda and and make this believable. Universal Championship time, the main event of the evening. Uh, Brock Lesnar defending against Roman Reigns. Um, Braun Strowman coming out with the briefcase, basically letting both guys know that he was going to stand outside, and whoever won, he was going to cash in on, basically warning them ahead of time. And then Reigns just went ham on Lesnar. Um, um, about three Superman punches, three spears, went for the cover, did not get it. Um, Lesnar then took his gloves off. Um, took what, uh, took a range to suplex city. I think it was about four suplexes. Um, tried going for the, I uh, tried going for, uh, the F5. Did not happen. Uh, Reigns tried to spear him. Brock sidestepped. Reigns flew out and ended up nailing Strowman. This was when, uh, then Lesnar went out and started beating the crap out of Strowman with the briefcase. Tossing the briefcase pretty much all the way back to the gorilla position. I'm surprised it can go through the LED board and hit someone back there. Um, then Lesnar wore him out with a chair, and, and he said, "Get these, get this chair." Something I can't else. Some, you know, think, I think it was mother or something. Some, something about his mother. I don't know. It was then Lesnar walked in the ring right into a spear. The cover, the count, one, two, three, your winner, and finally, new Universal Champion, Roman Reigns. Now, I'm not just celebrating because, you know, I'm not so necessarily celebrating because Roman Reigns is the Universal Champion. I'm celebrating because Brock is not the Universal Champion. So, we might actually see this belt on TV. You know, kind of hard to dangle the carrot when the carrot isn't there. Woo! Sorry, I was trying to, oh, a lot of talking. Okay, um, if I'm going to be honest, this was a great ma uh, show. Um, you're going to get my NXT review later from all accounts. That show was great. Um, you know, SummerSlam what was a great show. Um... As far as match of the night, um, I'm finding it very hard to pick one match. Um, there were at least three or four great matches. Um, I think I think really the only um, the only match I could say was like the worst match of the night is Strowman and Owens and only because it was so short and Owens didn't get any offense and they, they could have they could have had a little more with that one but again you know not a horrible one um I mean I would personally if I was going to do it out of 10 I, I'd give this a 9 it was a really Really good show. Easily one of the best WWE has ever done. Or at least um, in the last few years. This was a great a great show from top to bottom. Um, you know, there's... As, like I said, we've got, you've got closure in some areas, but continue feuds in other areas where you need them. And it, it just worked for me. Um, so, as always... What did you think of SummerSlam 2018? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, you can talk to me via my social media, Twitter and Instagram. And of course, jump on the Rito Goes Off Facebook page. Give it a like. Give it a follow. We're going to have a lot of fun. Now, of course, i got a lot of things uh, getting going here this week. Um, we're going to have some shows here on, here on the 
excuse me, on the channel. I am planning a Guido Goes Live for next Sunday where I will have a very special guest. And, you know, just, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, so please, if, you know, please like this video, share it with everyone you know. And if you have yet to join the Few But Play Faithful, please hit that subscribe button. Then ring the bell for notifications. Uh, speaking of bell ringing, whoo! I had a lot of fun watching SummerSlam. I hope you did too. Until next time, I am the Guido, and I think we're done here.